Okay, have we got the results? Because I realise that time is rattling along. We've still got to I'd just like to say before these results come in, I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, the people into the final two are Ian and Paul. So, that means I'm sorry. Malcolm and Campbell now have to leave. And there was I going to share a dram with you in that balloon. Do you know what you have? <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't rush away. <laughs> well, first of all, Ian says, he was telling me the rules of the game and how this all works. So he's, he's very well, well versed at this. So I hope I might get a few sympathy votes if this doesn't quite go so well. But I think um, having heard what Ian has had to say, I, I have to say, I, you know, I agree with everything that he said, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a practical kind of person. I'm not a professor. You know, I come from... Uh, Sympathy uh, vote. <laughs> um, I, come, I come from... No heckling from the audience, please. Uh, I come from, you know, a couple of O-levels, going out, working from a council estate Ooh. where I've lived in a pub. Oh, hey, hey, um, hey. Uh, so yeah. uh, and I think I've got a really practical insight to the reality of when I sit and hear people reel off research, statistics, evidence-based, gar, gar, gar. You know, the bottom line is, for me, is, is that actually... Young people, when you talk to them in a responsible way and when you sort of shake them up to a bit of a normality, respond fabulously well. I saw that when I worked for the YMCA and when I did anti-drug programs with them years and years ago back in the 80s. And when I came back to Mentor 20-something years later, I was really, really peeved, and that's been a polite P word, um, at the fact that nothing has happened. You know, we, in fact, it's got worse because of our culture towards this. And I think, you know, when Ian's talking about pricing and government legislation and all the rest of it, you know, that's fine. But governments change every five years. They're short-termists. That's why all the money's going into treatment. They want to get back in again. We'll whack all the money into treatment because we need a quick win. Fast buck. Get these people off benefits. Get them back to work. That's what the voters want. You know, of course treatment is important. But if you put all your money into treatment and regulation... What about actually just having the polite conversation about how to enjoy the stuff? You know, it just strikes me, it's not rocket science, it's pretty simple, and it's not happening. The schools don't do it. Parents don't do it. In the same way we don't talk about the birds and the bees, just saying to a six or seven year old, mummy and daddy really likes a glass of wine, but actually it's really bad for you, that's a really good protective thing for a parent to say to a kid. And we don't say it. And then we need to reinforce those messages slightly different as the children get older with the schools as well. So, you know, great. I'd love to see governments do what they're doing. But if you look at this current government strategy, which talks about prevention and need to intervene, it's not happening. OK, Cameron is not doing what he said in his drug policy. And I wanted to get to the minister who's in charge of it, you know, the, you know, broke in Shire. Off he goes, he's shuttled off to some other portfolio, and now we've got to deal with somebody else. And it happens all the way around, which is why my strategy has got to be let them get on with their dog fights. If they can do it, if they can do some regulation, if they do some probably fine. But, but I know where it starts for me. It starts with my own youngsters. And when me and my wife said we are not going to drink wine from Monday to Friday, as we used to regularly, my 17, 16 year old at the time very much noticed it as he's now going, why are you not? Well, we just think that we're just drinking too much. And he went, all right. Had a big impact on his behavior. I rest my case. Okay. Right, has anyone got any comments they want to make? I think you're putting the cart before the horse. I think the kind of change that we have some effect, as you said, I think the kind of change that we want would be a result of the kind of renormalised or denormalisation of excessive treatment that the measures that Ian proposes would introduce. Mm. I think that's the direction of, of change. I finish now. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I, I, you know, I, I do agree with that, the, the measure, but, but it's, I don't think it is cart before horse. I think if you want societal change, it has to come from both of those areas. And what I'm just saying is I'm fed up waiting for all the other stuff to happen because it's not, and I hope it does, and I'll leave other organisations to try and do that. But my campaigning mind is really more to do with actually, I think it's a great shame when I see a youngster not knowing how to enjoy a really good pint of real ale. And when I see him drinking some lager fizzy pop, I'd rather go up and say, do you want to try this, mate? Because this is really nice. And this is how, you, how we drink it. And we look for low percent. We go for 3.8 and we have a little... And that, that, to me, is changing culture and society 
of young people in a responsible way. So well, my 18-year-old okay. son got membership Dr. of Cameron. Can you keep it short? Very, very, very quickly, it kind of saddens me that you think that uh, the science is ga 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 ga, and, and, and we should ignore it. Just one piece of science. Quite a long time ago, the late Martin Plant did a trial with 15-year-old school kids, gave them a lot of education, told them alcohol was bad for them, etc., etc. Very carefully followed them up for four years. At 19, the group who got the education were drinking more than the group who got none. Okay. Well, one piece of research is, is fine. What I can say to you is that there have been trials in, in Thamesmead in South London, the kind of kids I know very well, 2,000 kids, that were done on an intervention program they don't talk about drugs and alcohol that's the point this is not that's the end result this has got nothing to do with drinking it's got to do with your behavior and what they found is these kids who are risky behavior who are bouncing off the walls that the teachers can't control when they were giving coping mechanisms in the classroom to do it lo and behold by 15 a third of them are drunk less okay okay this lady here quickly and i would say that there is um. evidence to say that a life skills approach does work in the classroom, and I think the recent research come out about Unplugged as well as Preventure kind of gives support to that. But I would also very much support Paul's view, again, that parents both need to be educated about the role of um, alcohol in the household, um, and also to kind of um, give them the reassurance that if they are drinking, that they're not hypocritical because they set different rules and regulations to how their children should kind okay. of access um, alcohol as well. And a lot of um, Parents do sanction the use of alcohol in the household against okay. children. Just the lady in front of you really quickly, and Very then I quickly. want to move to um, Ian. We've talked about effectiveness. We also need to talk about cost effectiveness. And you mentioned the cost of regulation. The cost of regulation is not necessarily very high. It's a question of who bears the costs. The costs of education and information are borne by the state and society. The costs of regulation are borne by the, the industry. And we need to look at cost effectiveness as well as effectiveness. OK, thank you. Right. Um, so that's case one. Now the balloon's jolly low now. Well, it's a chance. Well, thank you, you very much. Well, chair, well, uh, sure, you say it's very low, but you know, <laughs> actually, we probably just got rid of three quarters of the of the weight of the uh, balloon. Okay. So we've bounced uh, up a bit. Um, Paul and I are very slim, and uh, <laughs> Campbell and Malcolm may be carrying a bit more weight. So, well, that is really <laughs> below the belt. So, no, no I, that's I, a bit mean. So I'm just arguing that maybe, as, as we have so much in common, that it, it is a shame that one of us has to leave the balloon. I think it's really a matter of timing. Um, you know, I think what Paul says is absolutely right. We have to find the, the education tools that will change the next generation. Um, we, we have to find ways of renorming alcohol and uh, its position in society. But mm. we have a crisis, mm. and I'm afraid mm. all those things take time. Yep. If you come to my ward, the Royal Liverpool Hospital, you'll find people in their 20s dying of alcoholic liver disease. Mm. I appeared on a TV panel with the father of a girl, a, medical, a, 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 a university student, Freshers Week, tried to get out of an ambulance going at 75 miles an hour down the M5 when she was drunk out of her, her brain. You know, every year, children die mm -hmm. from alcohol. It's the commonest cause of death in young men between 15 and 24. So I don't think there is time to, to investigate how we renorm, etc. We should be doing it, yeah. but the top priority is to, is to shift the drinking curve back down. And it doesn't just it's not just about the people at the top end of the curve. We know that there are an awful lot of people who are never drunk, but they're, they're behind closed doors every, every night drinking, opening a bottle of wine and not getting the cork back in, uh, mm. using it to relieve stress and actually uh, ending up in more stress, more sleep problems. I think if we get GPs um, to do alcohol histories and brief interventions, that would be a step forward, again, along the line of prevention. But in the short term, we really have to put the cork on cheap booze 24-7 and marketed, I'm afraid, in an, still in an irresponsible way, going right up to the margins of the law rather than showing the corporate social responsibility that uh, is often claimed. Thank you. Well, I have to say, I'm, uh, please come in, because I know we didn't get you in before. There's a mic coming. I do uh, agree with quite a lot of um, what Paul has been saying. Um, I mean, there are uh, evidence-based approaches to education that seem to have some effects, like the life skills pro program yeah. that's already nice been mentioned, the good behavior program. Um, I haven't come across this preventure 
mm. programme, but I, will, I want to have a, a look at that. Um, however, the effectiveness is nowhere near as powerful as um, price, availability, and marketing. And especially, I think we need to think about marketing, because if um, we're educating uh, young children, and yet they're seeing all this marketing evidence that suggests that, um, that it is uh, a wonderful thing to do. And also, there are new ways, aren't there, that um, children are now videoing themselves drunk and putting it on YouTube. And, you know, that's become, that's become a bit of a, mm. uh, uh, an influence on them. So, although I agree with you, it's just a question of what is the most powerful. And also, I, w I think you shouldn't have said what you did about evidence base, because I don't think you believe that. I think you believe that evidence is important. Okay, thank you. Um, we can take one more comment, and then we're going to vote, if anyone has burning to say something. Yes. It's coming right up. You have the last words. I mean, I actually support both of these views, but it's really a matter of what is the most cost effective and what will happen most quickly. I'd like your comments actually on today's report from uh, UNICEF UK, an explanation for unhappiness in children being you know, excessive consumerism, you know, which apply, applies to marketing things. So to what extent uh, are the problems which we have with young people and their alcohol thing linked to excessive com uh, com consumerism and the lack of time that parents can spend with them well, I'm sure that that's true. Yeah, sorry, and do you want to? I'm right, you yeah. I, 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 I think that's a really, really good point because I think that, again, you know, the issue isn't so much the subject matter, it's what's around us. And I think um, my personal view is that our core values generally um, in a lot of parts of society are, have been eroded. Uh, and I think that they've been eroded, you know, just in terms of lots of ways, you know, from standing up and letting somebody sit down, from the way in which we interact generally with young, young people. Um, and I think that that is a part of the, the, the behaviour that we see with young people, the sort of you reap what you okay. sow. I think and social I, media as well plays a huge part. I think it's a very important study from UNICEF. And I think it also emphasises this, this is a global issue. Uh, it's alcohol is the top risk factor uh, in the world for death in, in, in people, pe men between about 20 and 65, premature death. And I think the UK has a chance to set an example here. The advertising, I mean, a lot of the companies are thinking of giving up advertising and, you know, in, on, the, on the television and so on. It's all internet, it's all uh, sponsorship, it's other, other much more subtle forms of marketing now. And I think we really have to wake up to that. Okay, right. Uh, decision time. Balloon's just about to crash onto the roof of St Paul's. Um, who votes for Ian? Yeah, could he stay in the balloon? So his idea is the one you want to follow. Are you counting? No, but I'm taking. But I'm taking note. <laughs> I think you've won. You there, Sarah? Okay, who votes to keep Paul in the balloon with his idea? Well, I think Paul, I'm really sorry. Pop. <laughs> Broken leg time. However, I think both ideas should work. And I think it is true that it's a crisis. Um, and I'm very glad to, that you've invited me here. Thank you very much Thank indeed. Thank you. I'm glad that we can float off into the sunset together in the Jolly balloon. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> off we go then. Bye-bye. <laughs>